Let me talk about what is the vision and national service. I think it is not, it does not begin or should not begin at the high school level. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to go to the primary school level. Leveraging and launching our creative industries in That's the country. That's mixed reviews. Well, I think, I think what got <laughs> mixed reviews is not the, con the concept, but the labeling. What we do today will affect those coming after us. Guilty. Kofi Goodman convicted of murdering Marco Archer. The verdict caused chaos in the courtroom. We've got all the details. The National Security Minister is the latest to weigh in on the electronic monitoring system. My own view is that the police should be doing the monitoring exclusively. Plus, is modern communication technology harming our society? I think the problems are only going to get worse. Tonight, we take a look at those stories and more. I'm Nikia DeVoe, and this is NB12 Weekend. everyone, thanks for joining us this Saturday here at Cable 12 Studios. You've probably heard by now a unanimous guilty verdict returned by the 12-member jury in the murder trial of Kofi Goodman. It took the jury less than two hours to return the verdict for which the prosecution is seeking the death penalty. But it was what happened after the verdict was read that sent the court into an uproar. Christina McNeil was there as the scene unfolded. She has this report. Uproar inside the Supreme Court Friday evening as the unanimous guilty verdict was read. Convicted murderer Kofi Goodman threatened to leap out of the prisoner's dock, launching threats at both Marco Archer's family and the jury. 38-year-old Goodman stood with a smirk on his face as the verdict was read. His demeanor calm as he learned the prosecution would be seeking the death penalty. To that, Goodman replied, that's all? Well, Goodman remained that way until Justice Bernard Turner told him that he would be remanded until sentencing, shouting, quote, I ready to come out this place as he tried to leap out of the prisoner's dock. Cries erupted in the courtroom as curse words flew from Goodman's mouth. Goodman shot threats at Marco Archer's family, then turned his attention to the jury, drawing back and spitting at one of the 11 female jurors. Police swiftly restrained Goodman, hurriedly escorting him from the court as the juror tried to chase after him. Goodman continued his rant as he was escorted away, threatening to destroy the country. Let me show you all what you gotta do. You but it was relief on the faces of Marco's parents and sisters who thanked God for the verdict handed down by the jury. Marco went missing from his Broom Street home when he went to a store to buy candy in September 2011. His body was discovered five days later in bushes near a Yorkshire Street apartment occupied by Goodman. My child can rest. I know never dress on a child. I never know what he know wrong. Look what I he do to my child. He, he know, he's a, a human dog being. On the he's hey. a human being. And it's obvious now that Marco was a sacrifice. He was a sacrifice to get that man off of the street so that he don't do it to anybody else. Who have been watching this case, following this case, and see what happened today, could see that that man is definitely a beast. And he does not deserve to be on the street to touch any other child any other innocent child so thank god we thank god for strength and endurance we thank god for the judge he has patience like job god has to be in him tanisia humes marco's eldest sister says it's a relief to know that someone will pay the price for her brother's murder this as she thanked the nation for its prayers and the prosecution team and jury for securing a guilty verdict we've been coming to court for four four months Definitely a re relief, but we had no doubt that they would have found him guilty because he is. Do you think it provides proper closure? This is what the family needed? <laughs> Actually, this is the first step into the family healing. This, this doesn't bring back Marco. 
did certain bring back him at all but this is the first step towards us starting to heal and finding a way to live with the, with the fact that he's gone i am i am happy with that i am definitely we are happy with that marco is 11 he was taken from us a lot of other children was damaged through with this man god is in control Goodman has been remanded to Her Majesty's prison and will return to court on September 27th for sentencing and review of his psychiatric and probation reports. He has requested that his attorney, Jeffrey Farquharson, have a hand in identifying the psychiatrist for that report. Goodman will have the opportunity to appeal the conviction and sentence after that point. Goodman, who also goes by the name Elvardo Ferguson, was convicted of unnatural sexual intercourse in 1993. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. There's been lots of back and forth in recent days over the electronic monitoring of criminal offenders. Well, National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage is the latest to weigh in on the issue. Nottage says proper monitoring should have prevented several incidents involving people wearing ankle bracelets. And as far as he's concerned, police should be doing the monitoring exclusively. When I say exclusively, I mean um, they should be the ones who are actually doing the monitoring, not people who have to be informed by others. Uh, because some, somewhere in that equation, uh, information doesn't pass or doesn't pass on a timely basis, etc. Head of security company ICS Security Concepts, Stephen Greenslade, said earlier this week that he is willing to terminate his company's contract with the government to save its reputation. Nodded says he has nothing to do with that process, but there could be another company managing the government's electronic monitoring program by the end of the year. As I understand it, ICS's contract expires in, during the month of November. The government will put the matter back out to bid well before November and will choose a supplier who provides us with the quality of service that we want. According to Nottage, the electronic monitoring program is extremely expensive and the government is even being charged for ankle bracelets that are not being used on suspects. Well, when asked if the government would consider doing away with the program altogether, Nottage said even with its many challenges, electronic monitoring is still beneficial. The device is a valuable means of monitoring criminals uh, and, 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 and that's point number one. Point number two though is what we are doing now is not suitable for hardened criminals and for people uh, for whom, who are charged with things like armed robbery and murders. Um, so I believe if the devices were used appropriately for minor criminals who, who are seeking bail, I think it would be far more successful. The government is researching whether there are other devices that are more suitable for hardened criminals. Well, in other crime news, a teenage boy has been missing since Tuesday, and police are asking for the public's help in finding him. 17-year-old Cordero Ash, a Claridge Road resident, was last seen Tuesday afternoon at Montague Beach between the hours of 2 and 5 p.m. Police say Ash was wearing a pair of navy blue basketball pants when he was last seen. The teenager is known to frequent Camp and Carib Roads and the Mackey Street area. If you've seen Cordero Ash or have any information on his whereabouts, police want you to call any of the numbers shown there on your screen. Well, police are also looking for a 25-year-old woman, Elsa Ferguson, of Burial Ground Corner off East Street. They want to question her in connection with threats of death and assault with a deadly weapon. She has shoulder-length dreadlocks with gold tips, dark brown complexion, and a slim build. Well, you know the drill. If you have any information on Elsa Ferguson's whereabouts, call any of those numbers you see there again on the screen. A Barrington workshop in Bain and Grantstown hopes to tackle the crime problem in the area. 